Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. The House and the Senate are tossing the political football known as Obamacare around. The House says no spending bill unless Obamacare is defunded. The Senate says no way. But meanwhile, October 1st is right around the corner, which means the health insurance exchanges will become active. It's the opportunity for everyone to get affordable health care coverage. So do you understand what you have to do to be covered? Do you know what all of this means for you and your family? Stay tuned. Another View on Health has some answers right after this news from NPR. Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Today is the fourth Friday of the month, which means it's Another View on Health. And I want to bring to your attention, before we talk with our guests today, the Illuminating Generations of Minority Health, which is a family-oriented free health event that will feature an array of health screenings, a continental breakfast and lunch, a children's area with fun activities, vendors, live music, and the premiere of the award-winning documentary Soul Food Junkies. And if you remember back in February, that was one of the first shows that Dr. Keith Newby and I did together when we talked with Byron Hurt, the producer of that documentary. Now, this health event is tomorrow, September 28th, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Norfolk Public Health Center, 830 Southampton Avenue, at the intersection of Collie and Brambleton Avenues. It is free, open to the public. There's all kinds of screenings. Go get healthy, have some fun, and it won't cost you a thing. So how about that? Now, I want to encourage you to get your laptop out or your tablet or simply a pencil and a pen because you need to take some notes today on our show. We have information that you need about the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare as it's called, the Health Insurance Exchange and FAMOUS, the Family Access to Medical Insurance Security Plan. Joining me today is my co-host on Another View on Health, cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. Hey Keith. Uh, how are you? Um, great. How you doing? Oh, doing well. Good. Gaylene Conoyton, president of Celebrate Health Care. Hi, Gaylene. How Hi. are you? Thank you for having me Go, today. Absolutely glad mm-hmm. to, you are here. Mm-hmm. And George Harden, Vice President of Information and Referral Service and Crisis Training for the Planning Council. Hi, George. How are you? Good afternoon. So glad to have you also. Nice to be now, here. Now, in full disclosure to my audience, um, George is here. He is going to talk to us about Famous uh, because that is a project that he is intimately uh, involved with and knows about. But I do serve on the board for the Planning Council. So just in full disclosure, one let people know that. So I don't want to make this a political show. All right. Um, but I do want to ask one question of all of you who are involved in this whole healthcare field. Is it frustrating for you right now as you hear all the fighting yet at the same time, knowing there's all this information that needs to get out um, to people so that they can afford health care? Gaylene, let's start with you. Well, health care was passed. And it's a law. It's the law of the land. Mm. And within that law, it states that health care will be funded. It's mandatory. So it is frustrating it's going back and forth right now instead of us trying to find a solution or how we can move forward. Because on October 1st, health care is still going to prevail one way or the other. And I think that's a point that people are a little bit confused about. It is a law. It's a law. And come Monday, uh, come Tuesday, mm-hmm. the October the 1st, you will be able to purchase insurance through the health care exchanges. That Correct. will move forward. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Keith. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, I think the... Uh, one of the bigger issues is just people understanding the law and what it really means. I think this back and forth uh, rhetoric that you hear, unfortunately, so is not backed by a lot of fact. I mean, you, you, you somebody heard something, you know, and and they and they run with it and they say, "Oh, this law is this or this law is that," and and you know, there really is not a whole lot of facts to back up their their assessment. And I ask people when they when they bring it up to me, I say, "Well, have you read it?" And they always say no because they haven't read it because I haven't read it. I tried to read it, but it's long and it's, uh, it's and this lo- you know his lawyers wrote it, so it's difficult to really understand completely. I, I have found I think what we have to do is we, it has to get out there 
and we just have to see how, how it works. Mm -hmm. I think once we get into it and we see it and we see how it's working, and then people can then make an assessment whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but they can't do it now. Because we don't even we don't know, know. know at this point. Uh, George. I agree with the previous statements, but further, uh, this insurance program would be very beneficial to children. Right now in the state of Virginia, we have 125,000 children that are uninsured. Uh, of that number, 71,000 are uh, thought to be eligible uh, for service. And if we don't take care of uh, medical uh, services to our children, uh, they end up missing school, they end up having childhood diseases and infections that don't go detected, mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, uh, we have uh, very high emergency room visits as a result of mm -hmm. kids not being insured. Mm -hmm. insured. And uh, the worst thing is that because of this situation, we have children that die in hospitals because uh, their medical uh, uh, problems have uh, increased to the point that they can't be healed. Okay. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 are the numbers to call. We are going to kind of break this up into two sections. We're going to talk about the Affordable Care Act and the health exchanges. And then we're also going to talk about FAMOUS, which is um, insurance primarily for children, but it, there had some other ramifications too. So um, if you have questions about either one, 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. George, I think I'm going to start with FAMOUS. Let's talk about exactly what that program is and why it is so important to get the word out about it at this point. Okay. FAMOUS stands for uh, Family Access to Medical Insurance Security. It is for children uh, age birth to teens age 19. Um, most of the uh, uh, children that uh, participate in this program um, uh, have their uh, medical uh, uh, issues, their health being greatly improved uh, because they can gain access uh, to medical treatment. In addition to serving children and teens, uh, this program also serves pregnant moms. Uh, in our state, as in others, uh, we've been having some difficulty with low birth weight babies. Uh, we've been having um, uh, issues with uh, women not getting prenatal treatment. Uh, when they qualify for this service, they get both of those. Mm -hmm. and now, is there an income level for no, famous? No, not for, frame, not for uh, children, teens, or um, uh, pregnant women at this point. Okay. Now, come October 1, there will be income eligibility requirements mm -hmm. uh, for pregnant moms to get the uh, uh, treatment that they deserve. But uh, uh, because uh, some uh, women have difficulties uh, with pregnancy, this program will cover those instances where uh, they have outstanding medical issues that result from um, the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that most people will have to do is to make contact with uh, service navigators, with uh, legal aid, with the Department of Social Services, because eligibility requirements change based on what is going on in the family, based on income, allowable and disallowable situations with uh, health care, then uh, eligibility is determined. So you can't go by just the first. Uh, so you can't say, for example, if it's a family of two mm -hmm. making a certain amount of num money. Right. It, it's, it depends on more than that. Is right. that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. For example, uh, the child may be in the home uh, with a parent, okay, but that parent not have uh, the child on their W-2 or their uh, federal income tax as a deduction. That may be with another person. So you get different allowables mm -hmm. as a result of that, and that's why face-to-face uh, -face, uh, discussions with a navigator or going online and filling it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also um, different programs and phone numbers that we'll discuss later on that people can get help with filling out the application, the application. Okay. and getting uh, different questions that they have addressed. So let me ask you this. If you are employed mm -hmm. and you have, say you have insurance through your workplace, would you could you still put your children on famous yes 
Yes. So you can. Yes, and this is what I mean by uh, uh, different eligibility requirements. You know, you you just don't always know that because these conditions exist, I don't qualify. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that occur in the family unit that may necessitate you're being approved for famous. So, George, if you're sitting here and you're telling me that there is an insurance program out there for children to be insured, and, and it, it covers everything from well visits to mm -hmm. hospital visits, et cetera, et cetera, why don't people know about it? While the program has been around for a number of years, there hasn't been enough resources allocated to getting the information out about the availability of the program. Mm -hmm. At the current time, uh, the Planning Council, local departments of social services, and the Virginia Healthcare Foundation are partnering to try and bring that awareness to Southampton Roads. Uh, at the current time, the uh, uh, Planning Council is uh, serving Southampton Roads as well as the peninsula as well as Western Tidewater to get this information out. Local departments of social services in all cities and counties are also responsible for getting this information out and will assist individuals in getting applications completed and finding out uh, uh, answers to some of the problems that they experience. Okay, and we've got a list of phone numbers and websites that you can check on our website, anotherviewradio.org. So you can go online to find out that. Okay, let me turn to you, Gaylene, and, um, and then Keith, I have something else for you in just a minute. The Affordable Care Act, the health care exchanges start October 1st. Correct. Explain to us exactly what that means. Right. Well, the Affordable Care Act, and when it puts consumers back in control of their health care under this new law, a new patient's bill of rights gives the American people stability and flexibility they need to make informed decisions about their health. And that's what happens on October the 1st. So they will be able to go online or to call a number or what in order to find out about this, this health care So starting on October 1st, mm -hmm. you can go to www.healthcare.gov. And you can go to the marketplace. Many of us shop online. You know, we shop for our insurance. We shop for our clothes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why, why not, not shop for your insurance? <laughs> you know how to look for deals on other things. So you look what, what works best for you and your family. And you can do that right online. Right online. And I will let you know, audience, that if you go to anotherviewradio.org and um, right on our homepage, there is a Kaiser Family Foundation health insurance um, subsidy calculator. Basically, you put in some information and it will give you a sense of how much the insurance may cost for your family. Correct. Um, so if you are already insured by an employer, mm -hmm. do you need to go to the exchange? You don't have to. However, you can go into the marketplace to see if you're getting the best value for what you're, do, what you're getting right now with your employer. That's an option that you have that you can't, you're able to do that mm -hmm. as well. And do you know now, because some employers, you know, they, you have those enrollment uh, deadlines and you can't opt out until there's some life changing correct. Um, situation. If you find that on, on the exchange, you can get the same coverage or even better for less money. Is that a a, a reason that you can get out of your employers? Well, Do first, you know? well, first of all, you need to be into the exchange. The exchange is between March. I mean, between this, um, October first mm -hmm. to March thirty first. Okay, that's when you can get into the exchange. You know, after that, it's only if you're life changing. Mm -hmm. If you're in the exchange. And you need to change plans in the exchange. But if you're yeah. in the in the plan for your job already, you may have to wait until that period is over before you can go into Correct. the exchange. Correct. Okay. Was that every year? Well, it's every year, and you know, you you shouldn't cancel your insurance right away. You need to make sure that you know you want you you want to make sure it overlaps because you don't want to be without coverage. Exactly. You know, you definitely don't want to. But I tell everyone to please visit you know www.healthcare.gov, and not only you can you see um, what an idea of what your insurance might cost, but you can see if you're eligible for any subsidies, government subsidies mm -hmm. as well. And talk to us about the government subsidies. Well, it depends on your income. And it's and it's from anywhere from under from from um, the underserved all the way to the middle class. They have certain subsidies and certain percentages that can be um, put towards your health care. And you can actually go online. You can go to come to the to your website right now. Another view. Mm -hmm. 
uh, radio.org and mm-hmm. you can get there or you can go to healthcare.gov and you can actually click on it and you can see what that applies for. And then they have all the explanations on how you would qualify mm-hmm. for that. And how many different insurance companies are, are in the marketplace? Does it vary state by state? Yeah, it does vary, and I, we ha- I don't know the exact number in Virginia. I'm hearing anywhere between 10 and 12, but I'm not quite sure. We'll know October 1st. The rates will come out on October the 1st as well. Oh, well, okay. Um, Dr. Newby, from a doctor's perspective, mm. good thing, bad thing? Are you guys excited about this? Well, it's, I think it's variable because, you know, again, you know, we're not really sure. I mean, because I, I kind of ha- I sit on two different Um, size of the fence here because I'm an employer as well as a doctor so you know I have to um, you know do a little bit more as relates to you know uh, funding of uh, employees health care insurances as a result of the law Mm -hmm. which you know I don't mind as much if it's going to help other people and you know kind of keep people healthy as we go along so from that aspect uh, you know it is what it is from a doctor perspective I'm still in not sure. I mean, I, I just want to see. I mean, to me, anybody that has health insurance now is only going to be a positive thing. And mm-hmm. that's that's one of the things I focus more of my attention on. You know, I've heard the rumors that saying, you know, we as doctors, we're going to get cut, you know, in our pay. And that's I mean, they've been saying that for years. I mean, and, and they've been cutting our pay regardless of this health <laughs> uh, plan or not. So, I, you know, for me, I think it's just it's, it remains to be seen in the end how this is going to play out for us. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but I, I'm always optimistic. I'm the eternal optimist on everything. <laughs> Gaylene, insurance is always complicated. I don't care who is doing it mm-hmm. or or whatever. And, and are there people? That I've heard there are certified application counselors, CACs, and navigators. Can you explain those two terms and how they will assist? the consumer. Correct. Insurance navigator positions is a government paid public advisor that will be available to help the uh, individuals and small business to walk them through the marketplace. They are not to be biased towards any insurance company. They are just there to walk a consumer or business through the process and to be able to talk about the different types of insurance and help and guide them through. That's what a navigator is. They're government paid positions. Mm -hmm. A certified application counselor is a volunteer position and basically, you don't get paid for it. But those uh, are for people that's in the healthcare um, in the healthcare arena, mm-hmm. or have organization that has a component of healthcare, and they too um, are, have to go online, and they have to take a five hour. First, they have to get approved, mm-hmm. and then you have to take a five hour course, and then they're able to walk people through the process. Now, why is this important? Because you're handling people's personal information. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, just anybody can't become a certified application um, counselor. And you can go on and be a partner for healthcare by going to Mm healthcare.gov, go all the way to the bottom of the page, click on partners, and then you'll see all the information to be a certified application counselor. You can also be a champion for healthcare, and I just got approved to be a champion for healthcare. Which means uh, champion for healthcare means that you'll get additional information from the um, from from health, the, uh, health and Human Services, and then you'll be able to use it within your network and be able to do outreach and they send you tips and stuff and things like that. So your company will be busy getting out into the community That's and correct. holding and information. we'll have an event coming up for that. Okay, yes. and we'll talk about that mm-hmm. in just a moment. Four four zero two six six five or one eight hundred nine four zero two two Four zero. James joins us from Hampton. Hi, James. You're on the air. Hello. Um, I have a question, and actually, your guys is uh, talking has brought up another question for me. But my main question was, uh, if I choose not to have any insurance at all, um, am I forced to participate in this program or pay a tax? Is that a, a true fact that I've been hearing in the news? Okay, Gaylene. Correct. Um, if you don't enroll between October 1st and March 31st um, in 2014, then for an individual, it could be um, 1% taxable income, with whichever is greater. So it could be a minimum of $95 or whichever is greater. Family of four or 1% taxable income, it could be $285 that you're being taxed if you don't get insurance at all. But let me just say this to you. Many people get insurance on their cars. They get insurance on their homes. Why not get insurance on your body? 
<laughs> okay. George, you do, did you want to respond to that also? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> while uh, uh, there is a, a payment for uh, not signing up, that payment will not be in the form of a check from you right. to the government. It will be a deduction from your taxes mm -hmm. that you submit to IRS uh, for a refund every year. So it'll be that much shorter yes. than w what you would normally get. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. We're talking about FAMOUS and we're also talking about the Affordable Care Act. What questions do you have? Give us a call, 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Kim joins us from Currituck. Hi, Kim. You're on the air. Hi. How are you? Okay. How are you? I'm good. Thank good. you. I have a question about eligibility for my teenage son. I am a single mother. I make $25,000 a year. Uh, my employer, I have insurance to my employer for myself. He pays 75% of my premium. Um, to have my son covered through my job, I would have to pay 100% of his premiums, which is more than 9.5% of my income. Would I be would he I be eligible to put him in the exchange and get him coverage that way? You can. You can. And they have something, um, they have certain levels, but for young people, they have something that's called cat catastrophic insurance. And it's a, a bare minimum where he can get his um his pre existing um exams. I'm I'm sorry, his um he can get his exams, preventative Preventive exams, health yeah, health and, yeah, at no charge, and and if he was to go to the hospital for emergency, I mean, he he wouldn't be charged as high as if he would with no insurance at all. But I would recommend that you too. I know your your insurance company pays seventy five percent, but maybe you should go on to um, the website uh, anotherviewradio uh, dot org, right, anotherviewradio dot org, <laughs> and click on that on, on the calculator and put in your income for you and your son, and see what. Uh, how much subsidy you might can get towards insurance. So look at that opportunity as well. And Joy, how old is your son, Kim? He is 16 years old. Okay, could she do famous? Yes. Mm -hmm. You can have insurance through your employer and then also qualify for famous. And I would suggest that uh, uh, you contact your local department of social services and get their assistance and help you work out the application for famous to uh, mm -hmm. support your son. Uh, for the amount that uh, is not covered now. And there, if if you go through Famous, there would be no charge to her. Is that exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, does that help you, Kim? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, uh, and I'll look at the um, what the local office has to offer. I appreciate that. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye now. So, uh, Dr. Newby, are, are your patients concerned about the Affordable Care Act? Are they asking you questions yeah. about it? Yeah, they, they do, but not in the sense. They just they just go on what they hear on, on TV. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is, you know, there's, they ask me, well, what do you think? And I, and I keep saying, I said, well, anybody, anytime you have somebody that has coverage is better than having no coverage, which mm -hmm. is what a lot of people have right now. Um, you know, the, the whole point to me is that you know, people have the ability and they don't take this thing lightly. Uh, you know, what I've found is there are some out there that do kind of sense, have the sense that this should be just a right of being an American is you should be able to, you know, that, I mean, you know, just put it out there. <laughs> I mean, one of the issues I think in a lot of my doctor colleagues and I share is, you know, we have a lot of patients that will, you know, they kind of tend to do whatever they want to do. They, they don't take care of themselves. You try to get them to do the right thing. You know, they always talk about the cost of health care is booming. And a lot of it's booming because people just do what they want to do. I mean, you have, you know, I mean, they have high blood pressure. They won't take the medicine. They have diabetes. They, they eat what they want to eat. You know, they don't even consider that this impacts not just them, but it impacts everybody because as the cost of health care goes up, it creates this problem and, and unfortunately so you know the only thing only two cents I was sticking to the Affordable Care Act that I think they didn't do which I really, really wish they did was start holding people accountable and it may be in there I don't know mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't heard that but just saying okay if you are you know 100 pounds overweight you know and you have to be okay every time you go to your doctor you have to be showing some progression in a positive direction that you're at least trying to get better I mean if you are a diabetic that you're or high blood pressure you could show that you are taking your medicines every day and you're at least giving that effort 
right now, there's no accountability to the patient. I mean, Medicare is talking about finding us, meaning doctors, if somebody comes in with heart failure, uh, and uh, you know, and the heart failure is a, a is very much a a sodium uh, food volume dependent entity. So, in mm-hmm. other words, if you don't really try to save this thing of water here. If I drink 20 of these and have heart failure, it's a high likelihood I'm going to go in heart failure and end up in the hospital. Well, the law states now, and that's not the affordable care, but just mm-hmm. Medicare laws say that if, if so, think of you're in their hospital and you have heart failure, you, you get discharged and you go to McDonald's right after you leave and you <laughs> ate everything under the sun, <laughs> and then that night you go back in heart failure and you come back to the hospital, they hold it us, meaning doctors, doctors and the hospitals accountable to the and saying we didn't do our job well in educating that patient or, or treating their heart failure, which is not true. I'm like, I can't go home with you and babysit you. Say, don't eat that or don't drink that. I mean, we don't, we can't do that. And there's no accountability. So, right so the the issue is overall, we all, in addition to being able to pay for health care, we need to just start doing some things to make sure that we keep ourselves healthy. Yeah, I mean, because really boils down to is if if you know a lot of these diseases we have out here are preventable, with the exception of stuff like cancer and certain aspects of heart disease. Mm-hmm. But when you really look at it, high blood pressure, a lot of that's reversible. Diabetes, a lot of that's reversible. Cholesterol issues, a lot of that's reversible. All the things that can lead to the heart problems and the, you know, smokers, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, hope, please, all your smokers out there, don't kill me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, you know, there's a lot. Think about what smoking causes, lung cancer, vascular disease, heart disease, strokes. Mm-hmm. I mean, if those things went away, then you talk about the cost of health care going down dramatically just on prevention alone. So, you know, when you really look at the bottom line, I think there's a lot to say about prevention, which this program does push is prevention. Mm -hmm. The only thing I don't know is does it have anything about accountability Accountability in there. If you're just joining us, we're talking about insurance options for your family. Uh, We're talking about the Affordable Care Act as well as Famous for Your Children with Gaylene Conoyton, president of Celebrate Healthcare, George Harden, a vice president with the Planning Council, and my co-host, cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. 440-2665 or one 800 940 Four zero two two four zero. Give us a call. What questions do you have about the Affordable Care Act? And if you don't want to call us, you can also send us a note on Facebook. Lisa Godley, our producer, is busy monitoring. So we are on Facebook at Another View Radio. And let's see, do we have a call available? Let's talk to Sherry in Portsmouth. Hi, Sherry, you're on the air. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Gailey. It's Sherry uh, for Juneteenth. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this show today. You're welcome. My question is, how do uh, we go about uh, becoming navigators uh, and, and giving in? We want to be able to, as an organization, be an information hub, an education hub for folks who need to get information about the health care, Obamacare. How do we go about doing that? Okay, the navigator, the process was completed in June, and they awarded um, the navigators on August the 15th. However, um, the for next year, the following year for 2015, I understand that um, the information will be out in um, late spring of 2014 of next year. That of information next year, about if you want to be a navigator. However, if you are affiliated or you are you have a healthcare component, you can actually go online right now to healthcare.gov, go all the way down to partners, and then when you click on partners, you'll see how to apply to be a certified application counselor. And you can do that now. And then that way, June, uh, Sherry, you'll be able to go and work with the community on way on how to fill out the application, right? And, and be- understand what's on there. Because she's exa- she's exactly right. We need more locations where people can go to to um, to find to get more information or help, have help being walked through the process. Thanks so much for that call. We appreciate that. So I, my question to you is: When does the health insurance kick in? Oh yeah, see, that's the key part right there. <laughs> We want, to, we want to try and get as many people in by December the 15th, because if you go in by December the 15th, then your insurance will start automatically on January the 1st. Okay, so people need to understand. It's if you a, sign it's a up table. On, it's a on, table. On, the, the, on October 1st, you still don't have health care coverage no, you don't. until January 1. That's exactly right. That's when okay. it starts. And you, and you need to sign up by the, December 15th to have January. Now, if you sign up after December 15th, then it'll start at a later date. And so it's a timetable that you have mm-hmm. when, your insurance, when your insurance will kick in. So when you sign up, it doesn't start right away. 
away. Mm -hmm. You have a a little waiting period. Okay. And George, in terms of famous, once you fill out the application and so forth, how long before your actual coverage for your children starts? Uh, Once you're uh, approved, immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, um, one thing that uh, is true with famous, if you had uh, coverage prior to October 1, mm-hmm. and you just summarily uh, uh, discontinued that coverage for no bona fide reason, then you have to wait four months mm-hmm. before okay. you can uh, apply and be approved. Uh, so if you've had if you coverage lost before, your job, okay. Yes, if you lost your job, mm-hmm. if your hours were cut back, that's an extenuating circumstance that uh, would cause you to be approved immediately. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, it, if you had insurance, you have to wait four months right. before that that can kick right. in for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. John joins us from Norfolk. Hi, John. You're on the air. John. Hello, John. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. I have a so-called Cadillac Health Plan. I believe for my employer. How would that affect me? And also, my mom's 93 and has Social Security and a supplemental plan. Would it change for her at all? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have the Cadillac plan with your insurance. I mean, with your per- currently current employer now, you can actually still go on the exchange and you can look at the different plans and see if um, the plans fit you. The, uh, that you might pay a little bit less than what you're playing right now. The exchange, the plans in the exchange are no different really than the plans that you have right now in terms of what was included in it. You, where you, the plan you have now, you can go to any doctor right mm-hmm. now. You can go to any doctor. They have plans like that in the exchange as well. Now, for your mother, she's on, I'm, I suspect she's on Medicare, correct? Right. I'm not paying anything for my plan right now. Oh, okay. Well, you, then might you, be, may, you may want to stay where you, you are. You may want to stay right where you are. Then. If you're not paying anything, then you just stay right where you are, right there, in terms of that. In terms of uh, Medicaid and Medicare, I know that we, Medicaid expansion is on the table right now. Um, however, uh, in terms of your mother with the med, under the Medicaid, you know, she currently has, you know, she has, um, she, you can go on the system and, and let her look and see what other plans that might work for her, but I think that she's fine where she is right now. Okay, thanks so much for that call. Did you have another question? Isn't there a tax on Cadillac plans? A tax on Cadillac plans. That's something I from, have. From your employer, you're saying? Well, I've read that if you have a really good health plan, that there's going to be a so-called Cadillac health care tax plan. I mean, cattle attack okay. on, on, on those really wonderful health plans if people have them already. George? Maybe, maybe he's talking about uh, the various stages of the plan, the uh, bronze, the platinum, the gold. I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can call 1-800-318-2596. That's 1-800-318-2596. That puts you right to the um, customer service number um, for the affordable health care plan, and they'll be able to answer all questions. We want to make sure we give you um, correct information. So, <laughs> yeah, it sounds, John. It sounds like also if you have um, insurance through your employer, I don't know whether they take if you pay any premiums. Although you say you don't pay anything, um, usually if you pay premiums, they may take that out on a pre-tax basis. But in terms of the healthcare exchange, there are four levels, the bronze, the silver, the Cadillac, and the platinum. And that determines those levels that are uh, um, in terms of how much they cost and what they cover. So exactly. hopefully that will help you. Try that number. Or you can go to anotherviewradio.org and check out our website. Thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. So th- let's talk about those levels a little bit. Um, Gaylene, can you tell us what, what each one, just an overview which each of those levels cover? Well, you know? you know, it's just like anything else. You have um, your bronze, which is basically... Your basic, yeah, very basic coverage. Your very basic cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have your silver, mm-hmm. you know, which will give you um, a little bit more. I mean, and then, So they and each they build have, on top and, of and, each and other. And let me just say this. Some people say, okay, well, fine. 
some people are in an HMO network right now and they have a network of doctors that they can only work with within that network. And then you have some people have a PPO plan where they can choose their doctors. Mm -hmm. Well, these plans is no different than that. So when you hear these commercials saying, I won't be able to use my same doctor, well, you can just look at the plan where your doctor is in. Now, there's a lot of doctors and a lot of great doctors that are in the network. Mm -hmm. Uh, My plan that I have now I use my doctors are all within a network and I have really good doctors in a network. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, these plans are really no different than what you have now. You just have to choose what best fits you. So mm-hmm. really what we want people to understand is that this is m- offering more choice, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's not a different choice. It's just more choice in terms of the different um, types of coverage that you can get. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that, that, that is very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're either going to pay a higher premium. Mm-hmm. You know, for the care that you're looking for, or you pay a lower premium because you're healthy and you don't require a lot of intervention, mm-hmm. which is great. And mm-hmm. all the plans includes preventative care. Yes. You know, yes. that's the key right there. It mm-hmm. includes preventative care. So you can go and you can get all of your physicals, your well women exams, your mammograms, your mm-hmm. colonoscopy, mm-hmm. and not pay one dime. Not pay, a, not pay a copay, a deductible, or anything like that. Yes. So does that make it, what about specialists like Dr. Newby here? <laughs> well, what does that Dr. Newby answer that question? <laughs> well, you know, like I said, I, the way it's always looking, we're going we're gonna to get messed up in the end to a certain degree. I mean, because it, it is seems to be geared more to the primary care doctors. But, you know, I think specialists, I mean, we do add a lot of value, I think, to mm-hmm. Uh, you know our level of expertise in certain arenas. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we're going to be we're going to be needed. I mean, heart disease is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm not necessarily uh, as long as I you know I feel like I'm doing an adequate job and my patients are happy with me. I, I'm not so much concerned with that. Uh, you know, I, I think like anything else is just people understanding. The the main thing I think with the plan is as it was mentioned earlier is is people just have to have an understanding of what the plans are all about. Mm-hmm. What what I have found. It, more in the older population is um, I've seen a lot of the elderly patients get messed up in plans because like, some broker comes by the house and and we, and we I've been a victim of that because of family friends and my mama called me up and said you know such and such got messed up because they got in some other plan they didn't understand mm-hmm. and uh, then that's when they got taken away from their doctor not because of anything else but they picked the wrong plan based mm-hmm. on wrong information or mm-hmm. bad information yes. and, but but you know and again a lot of brokers would come by these you know patients houses and they'll say what is it you're looking for and of course like any other person they're gonna say give me the cheapest thing that i can still get coverage right. but they don't really realize that the cheaper thing may take away a lot of things that they really need and mm-hmm. that's where the educational piece is going to be key Gaylene, yeah, let me ask you about the educational piece and actually both you too george because it sounds like there's a lot of confusion out there as you go in and you work with these community groups and so forth, how much time are you going to be able to sit and really spend with that person? I mean, do you literally walk them through each question you and, have to. And, and help them to understand? You have to. You, we're not a state run exchange. Let's just start there. You know, our governor decided that he wanted to wait. You know, he has some more questions he want to answer. So we're not a state run. So. It takes all of us and more. It's a grassroots effort. I mm-hmm. encourage everyone to please visit healthcare.gov or come on over to another view radio <laughs> dot org, either right. dot org yeah. and, and go and, 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 and learn more about it. But I encourage everyone to learn what the plans are, learn what healthcare is, become a champion of health care or a certified application counselor. It's our responsibility to educate our community. Mm -hmm. And this is a a grassroots effort. So it does take time and it is confusing because Maryland is the number one state in the country right now that's being viewed as a state-run exchange as being the best in the country right now because they're doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting. I was reading an article in the Post about um, the fact that because Maryland, Northern Virginia, and D.C. are all there together and the people in D.C. and Northern Virginia are hearing the commercials about Maryland's exchange Mm -hmm. and they're getting much more information happens to be my home state but mm-hmm. that's okay mm-hmm. um, but mm-hmm. they're getting much more information than we are receiving here mm-hmm. in Virginia unfortunately mm-hmm. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 Yasmin joins us from Virginia Beach hi Yasmin you're on the air okay hi hi um 
first of all, I want to make a comment, and my comment is that, you know, I think prevention, is, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and I think that people really have to take responsibility for their health. And, okay. you know, I'm over 50, and I've started working out and changing my diet and all these kind of things because I really decided I want a quality life as I get older. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is, where is the information, like, in general, where people, everyday people, can find out exactly what this act is about and how it actually affects us and where do we go other than this exchange? Healthcare.gov. Healthcare.gov is not only where the marketplace is located, but all the information, all the fact sheets, all the training materials, everything, videos, is on healthcare.gov. Okay, thank you so much, Yasmin. Brad joins us from Chesapeake. Hi, Brad, you're on the air. Hi, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So my question is, is there a mechanism in place that uh, prevents people from just paying the fine or the tax? That know, prevents not, people from paying. Not, not, not paying their, let's say the premium is $200 a year, but my tax is only $400. Excuse me, the premium is $200 a month, but my, my fine, as it were, is only $400 a year. Why would I not just pay the fine? I would imagine that's an individual choice. Yeah, but that's definitely an individual choice. You're looking at one percent. You're looking at one percent of your taxable income that would be taken off of your taxes. That um, it could be as low as ninety five dollars if you choose not to help have health care. But then again, I say that. You know, if you have health care on your car and you drive, and you have health care in your home, why not have one on your body? Okay, George, did you want to add anything to that? No? Okay. In terms of Famous um, and people getting the help that they need, are you also planning council and others doing any kind of grassroots work to get the word out? Uh, Yes. Uh, We have a responsibility to be uh, in health departments uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, young ladies uh, that have uninsured children, uh, the WIC offices. uh, we will go to any uh, faith-based organization that has uh, members that need information. Uh, we will go there uh, nights, weekends. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're interested in getting the information out mm-hmm. as best we can, and so we'll go wherever we need to go. Okay, and Famous is a Virginia State program, correct? Correct. Okay, and for the most part, there may be a small copay, but for the most part, this is insurance that you do not have to pay for, and your children are completely covered. Yes. Is that any, anything that is else correct. you want to say that say about that to people to encourage them to get to get busy and go find out whether or not they qualify? Uh, well, with the new changes that are coming about October one, uh, there isn't many that are different than they are right now. The mm-hmm. age group is still the same. Uh, pregnant women uh, don't have an age limit on them. Uh, the only requirements are that they must be a resident uh, of Virginia or show proof that they intend to be a resident um, of Virginia. Um, they're going to go through the IRS to determine, you know, the accuracy of uh, uh, income, uh, the Social Security numbers, uh, citizenship, immigration, all of that uh, mm-hmm. is going to be factored in to determine eligibility for okay. the service. And if you want to know where you can go to find out more information about Famous, you can go to our website, anotherviewradio.org. There we have a complete list that George has provided for us of service providers all around the state. And and this is anyone in the state of Virginia that can take advantage of this. The health care exchange that uh, in the grassroots efforts, how... What is the, your advice, Gaylene, to people about finding out more information? Call 1-800-318-2596. Visit healthcare.gov. And then I'm having an event yeah. on October the 1st, Tuesday, October the 1st, and Saturday, October the 5th. We're going to have a Celebrate Healthcare Enroll Fest. We will be working with um, Southeastern in Virginia for healthcare. Um, which is formerly known as Pitch. They will. They are certified application counselors. They will be enrolling people right on site. We're partnering with the Urban League and many agencies, and uh, it'll be from ten to two on Tuesday, October the first. On Saturday, 
uh, October the 5th from 10 to 3 at the Boo Williams Sportsplex in Hampton mm -hmm. at 5 Armistead Point Parkway. You can visit CelebrateHealthCare.net. Um, and or call seven five seven two eight seven zero two seven seven for more information. But not only will we have, um, you can enroll on site. There will be several panel discussions. Our regional director Joanne Grossi for with Health and Human Services will be there on Saturday, and we will also have a job and education fair and seminars because we're enrolling people. But people are forgetting about the other spectrum that once people start going to the doctors because it's, they get free preventative care, it's included in their health insurance, mm -hmm. jobs are going, it's going to be a big boom. And we're not prepared as a workforce to fill many of these jobs that, is, that, that needs to be filled, especially nurses. Nurses have been there forever. But nurses and doctors are not the only two positions. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, a many components to health care. And so we will have seminars on what jobs will be available and what classes that you need to take. Brian and Stratton will be on, on site and some other community colleges will be on site. And then we'll have some employers there and then we'll actually have a seminar on how to reinvent yourself in healthcare. Okay, and last word to you, Dr. Newby. Overall, what do you want people to know and recognize out of all of this? Well, I think the key thing is just, again, it's all about just education and just understanding what the, what the plan is all about and you're making sure you're making the best choices for you and your family because you can make that wrong choice and then you're going to find it's not going to be a good experience. So really the key thing is understanding what you're signing up for, what it all entails. And I would tell everybody, ask questions. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people just, they, they hear something, they don't understand it, and they just not, they look at you with that deer in the head like <laughs> stare, and they never go further than that. And you got to ask questions. I mean, if, if people are there to help you and make sure you understand. Okay, yeah. education is the key. That got 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, Legal Aid Society of Southeastern Virginia is a, a source of information and legal uh, uh, responses uh, to the affordable care. We have Legal Aid in Norfolk, the Eastern Shore, uh, Chesapeake, uh, and the city of Hampton. Okay, you got the last word, George. Thank you all so much. Educate yourself about your health care, and we will be right back. Hello, this is Spike Lee with Happening, and you listen to Another View, 89.5 FM on WHRP. Wow, Spike Lee, that's awesome. <laughs> He's one of the most decorated musicians and composers in the world. Just to give you some idea of his accomplishments, Wynton Marsalis was the first jazz artist to win a Pulitzer Prize in music and the first and only artist to win a classical and jazz Grammy in the same year. Our Lisa Godley recently spoke to Marsalis as he prepares for next week's concert here in the Hampton Roads. For Wynton Marsalis, music has always been a part of life. As a youngster growing up in New Orleans, he was surrounded by it. And like many African Americans, his first public performance was in church. I always played with musicians who played in the church, played in church all in high school, and a lot of spiritual people in my family. So it was simply returning to his roots when the nine-time Grammy Award-winning trumpeteer and composer was asked in 2008 to aid in the 200th anniversary of Harlem's Abyssinian Baptist Church by composing a mass that combined different genres of music. Tonight, this celebration is of sacred importance because it reclaims the tradition of gospel and it reclaims the tradition of jazz and it puts the sacred and the secular together in order that we might praise ye the Lord. It just took me three hard months of staying up all night to do to to finish and write everything out. But it took years to really just learn all the different things to be able to put together to create a mass like this. Marsalis's acclaimed mass has now been transformed into a gospel celebration touring all over the U.S., including here in Hampton Roads. He describes it as a journey, taking the audience from the swarm of the mass into a celebration of praise. 
and it uses a wide range of, of, of musical techniques and styles from the kind of joyous jump call and responses of, of a pro professional to introspective moan of meditation it's more like the kind of moans that the that the, the, the people would do right after slavery it features instruments playing and people talking When he's not performing with the jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, Marsalis is working as the managing and artistic director of jazz at Lincoln Center. He also spends time lecturing and teaching young people about music and the role it plays in our lives. He says the first thing he always says to young people just starting out is to pick an instrument that they like. If you find that instrument that's like you, you're gonna you won't mind playing it. The second thing I'd say to parents, mainly if you're talking about really young people, because they're starting out, don't make them practice for a half hour or an hour. Make them practice for 15 minutes. But make them practice every day for 15 minutes. Because that 15 minutes is like a half hour to a kid or an hour. And then that 15 minutes, you listen to them play something, whatever it is, and do just like we do when we go see our kids play some type of sporting event. No matter how bad it looks or sounds, give them unbelievable depth. I've never heard nothing that great. Do exactly like you do at the basketball game, the volleyball game, and let them be a part of the, of the community of you. Marsalis is credited with helping propel jazz to the forefront of American culture. His piece, Blood on the Fields, netted him the 1997 Pulitzer Prize in music. Well, that was just about slavery and what is freedom. And if freedom was about a woman, the woman teaching the man love and the strength that comes in, the strength that comes through sacrifice. When Marsalis says most of the things he does, he loves doing. And he's looking forward to bringing Abyssinian a gospel celebration to Hampton Roads. Well, I just think we have an unbelievable choir of 70 people led by a, a, a young genius of that type of choral conducting. He's a fantastic piano player. And there's so, a lot of interesting choral effects and things that he brings out. And I think that people will enjoy it, especially what he's done with the choir. And of course, the band is, is always ready. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. And you know what's even better? We have two pairs of tickets to Abyssinian, a gospel celebration featuring the jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra with Witten Marsalis and Corral Le Chateau, conducted by Damien Sneed. It's on Saturday, October the 5th at 8 p.m. at Chrysler Hall. Caller number 5 and caller number 10 to 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 will win two tickets to this fabulous Performance. So call right now, caller number five and caller number 10 to 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. And we hope you've enjoyed today's show. You can listen again or share the podcast with a friend at anotherviewradio.org. Next week, an in-depth look at a noble but often misunderstood profession, the domestic worker. Our theme music is composed and performed by Jay Sennett. Lisa Godley is our show producer. Victor Bowen is our audio engineer. And Eric Moore answered our phones. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Have a fabulous weekend, everyone. And let's get together again next Friday at noon for another view. Don't forget, call for those tickets right now. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Callers number 5 and caller number 10 win two tickets to Abyssinian. Take care, everyone. Talk to you next week.